Welcome to Octane Vein. Today I'm taking a break from the Alpha build, uh, which I probably shouldn't be doing because there's only 27 days till I depart for the Nurburgring, but this has been in the diary for quite a few months and this is an opportunity that I can't miss. So I'm currently at my mate Paul's house to pick up this. Now this is an M52 B28 and for those of you who aren't fluent in BMW, that is a 2.8 litre six cylinder engine out of the E36. Now the E36 is the 3 Series from the 90s basically, it spanned the whole of the 1990s. Now this engine is actually out of this E36, which is Paul's project car. So this car now has a 3.3 litre Alpina engine in it, so this one is available for me to put in the E21. Now the engine swap isn't the only thing that Paul's done to this car. This chassis on this car is now absolutely immaculate. There's no rust on it whatsoever. And I'll be featuring this car in much more detail later on in the series. So I mentioned in episode one that I've got individual throttle bodies to put on the M10 engine, which is currently in the E21. Now that is still my plan. But after that, I then got the option of how I want to gain more power. So I could turbo the M10, which I could do using the inlet manifold that I've got from the Nissan Pulsar GTIR, which the throttle bodies are off. So I could then turbo it, and that would take me to anywhere between 220 to say 250 brake horsepower quite happily, without having to do anything else to the M10. Or the alternative is to put a straight six in there. Now that's where this engine comes in. And I think that's probably going to be the direction I'm going to go, especially as now I have an engine. Now this engine had 193 horsepower when it was fitted to the E36 328. Now that's already almost two and a half times the power that the E21 has got. But there's many things that you can do to tune these engines quite easily and get a little bit more power. So when Paul was running this in this car, he actually had about 220 horsepower. So that's getting to the level where I'd be really happy with that amount of power in the E21, which weighs only about a ton. And the other big thing about this is it's naturally aspirated horsepower. I don't really want to go down the turbo route if I'm putting a six cylinder engine in. So to be somewhere in the region of 220 or maybe a little bit more, then I'd be really happy with that. So this engine is my way of being able to do that. The other good thing about this, is it's almost a straight swap. So this has the same engine mount positions as the M20 engine, and the M20 was the six cylinder version of the M10, which is in the E21 at the moment. So the subframes on the E21 are different for the M10 and M20 engines. However, I've already got hold of an E21 front subframe to take the M20 engine, and therefore this M52 will then fit straight onto that subframe. So from a point of view of fabrication and getting the engine to fit, there's not actually that much to do. Now the gearbox and the prop, that's a different matter. The gearbox isn't gonna fit straight in, and I don't know if I'm gonna to have to modify the, uh, the transmission tunnel or anything like that, but you know that's not too difficult. So they're not jobs that I'm really that worried about. So. With the prospect of having 220 horsepower from a straight six, naturally aspirated in the E21, it's basically I've got to do it. And taking this engine home today basically means I am going to do it. So it's not going to happen for a while. Obviously I need to finish the Alpha first. The E21 still has the original rear subframe, which isn't really strong enough for a big six cylinder engine but I do already have the rear subframe from an E28, which is the five series from the same era, which is much bigger, has bigger diameter drive shafts and takes a bigger diff and is just generally stronger. So it will take the power from a bigger engine. So I need to do that swap. I also want to do the throttle bodies on the E21 before I change for a six cylinder engine. But the fact that I've got the engine means that I can start planning all the other parts so it's not just the engine that I'm picking up today. Paul's pretty much given me a complete kit of all the parts that I need to do the swap. So that includes things like the gearbox, the exhaust manifolds, the exhaust downpipes, the prop shafts. 
I'm not going to be able to use the prop shafts that he gives me directly because it's got the E28 rear subframe, but I can use parts of it to make the custom prop shaft that I need, so that will help keep the cost down. Paul's also given me the inlet manifold from an M50 engine, which is the predecessor to the M52. And the reason that's good is because it's less restrictive than the M52 manifold, so that means that even more power can be got out of it. And on top of that, there's a box full of parts that got all the other things like the ancillaries for the engine, so the alternator, the starter motor, coil packs, and uh, just generally everything I need to get going. So really, there shouldn't be that many extra parts that I need to get. So I'm really excited. As I said, this isn't going to be happening for quite some time, but the fact that I've got the engine means I know I'm going to do it. And yeah, the E21 is going to be an absolute weapon with 230 brake horsepower. So the only thing left to do now is load everything up and take it home.